user engagement. What is it that motivates connected individuals to working together, to act together for a common interest, as opposed to acting on the, for their own cause, their own interests? Hey, I'm John Harris, and this is the Exponential Entrepreneur Academy coming to you live from our digital studios. Perhaps more important than, than what is it that causes people to act in concert is why is it important? It provides a, a virtuous, positive feedback loop when it comes to enterprise, exponential enterprises. It enables, it enables faster growth, um, more innovation, and more innovative ideas, and um, the customer, customer and customer communications is enhanced. Um, look, you know that Google, Airbnb, Uber, uh, eBay, Yelp, GitHub, uh, Twitter, etc., they all have systems in place to gather information to communicate with the crowd. And it helps them get feedback in order to change direction to help with the change management. You know, Google has 10, so you can go in with your ideas on AI and utilize their, their powerful infrastructure uh, that they have with their computing capabilities. Um, and obviously that contributes to their overall understanding of what people are looking for and what's possible and what's potential out there. Um, you need to leverage engagement and what we're looking at is the different mechanisms by which you can do that. Um, digital reputation, games, and incentive prizes are key components of the mechanisms used to get this type of engagement. Um, so look at gamers. There are over 700 million gamers. And on average, a gamer will spend over an hour a day playing games online. Now, by the time a, a millennial or, or a Z Gen is 21, they've probably racked up already 100,000 hours playing games. It's something that they do, it's something that they are, they feel part of something, it gives them relaxation, gives them entertainment, and gives them some competitive um, uh, competition, some competitive games and things to do with each other. So it's a very powerful thing. And researchers for AI have not been slow to pick up on this. Um, there are some of the AI researchers trying to map the brain. And the problem is that for one AI researcher to create or reconstruct one neuron, it takes like over 50 hours. Now the brain has 85 billion neurons. So that's equal or equivalent to 4,250 billion hours of coding uh, to map the brain, which is something like 485 million years. Okay, that's very linear and very slow and not going to happen. As an exponential exercise, um, you, you enter a platform like um, I, iWire. And iWire, what it does, it has a game, and on the game, people can create, take 2D pieces and create 3D pieces. And what happens is, whilst that's happening, it's actually creating a neuron in the, in behind the scene. And the guys have, I think it's 130,000 players, they have um, 145 countries competing, and they're already moving up towards, uh, the, going towards the 200 neuron mark. So, it's, it's having a, a much bigger impact and utilizing the manpower that can be found within a crowd. There are other th games that, that are very important. For example, Malaria Spot. There are millions of people dying from malaria every, the, every year. And the problem is that when you get malaria, it doesn't necessarily reflect straight away that you, you, you can see that you've actually got malaria. You've got to be careful when you treat patients that you're not treating them for the wrong thing. And what happens is it takes a lot of manpower to keep checking to see if somebody actually has got malaria, that the, the actual, the, 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 the virus shows up, the, 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 the destruction of the cell starts to actually show up. And this manpower is just very expensive and not available everywhere. So they've got a game where they take patients' actual slides and you can go online with your mouse and that, and you can you get the rules of the game and you see how to identify affected cells. And what you do is you shoot them with your mouse. And what it is, 
it then records that. And you asked, it's very important to be as accurate as possible and you, you, you have the rules that, to the game. And this is saving lives. Okay, another one is Galaxy Zoo where they're classifying galaxies by shape. And obviously, this is another huge number and it's very difficult and cumbersome. So they're getting the crowd to contribute. Another one is folded. One of the miracles of nature is protein folding. And they got a competition where you fold proteins and what they're looking to do is one of these protein folding exercises in and helping towards a cure for AIDS. So these are some things that games provide and it's very important to understand what we've been saying here. They're not being exploited. People are asking to contribute. They're being empowered to do something of consequence which is a key driver especially for Zgeners. So let's look at some of the 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 aspects of this. There are dynamics which we're looking for behavior and behavior change. There are mechanisms by which there are goals, results, and rules that are set. And there are components which are levels of achievement, badges, and things that motivate people to contribute as a group to a, to a group interest, to something bigger than themselves. So if you look at incentive competitions, we spoke about gamers. Incentive competitions are something like engagement through prizes, the X Prize to solve a problem. So the Ansari Award by Peter de Mendes was a $10 million reward to try and get a reusable spacecraft to go to a certain altitude in space to come back and be reusable, to be reused within a number of weeks. And it was won by, I think it was Spaceship One. And Richard Branson had been approached originally to, to go into the, the, the competition or to actually invest in the idea. He had rejected it, but obviously once it was achieved, he jumped in and Virgin Galactic was formed for space travel tourism. So gamification, well, incentive competitions have solved a lot of problems. There was a cleanup for the oil spills, and I believe that was done by a tattoo artist. As a, so you, it's amazing the people who are best at doing things are not always the most highly qualified. Then we can look at something like gamification as opposed to incentive competition or gamers, where you're looking for behavior change. And it's, it was amazing to see that, I think it was in one of the Scandinavian countries, they had an escalator and they wanted people to change their behavior to start using the stairs. Well, what they did is they put piano keys on the stairs, people could go up the stairs and play a tune or, or, or play basically the piano, the scale going up the stairs. And then some people would be going up and down actually playing a tune and everybody started using the stairs as opposed to the escalator because it was fun. Gamification needs to be fun in order to be successful. Another one was a park cleanup whereby people who collected or had some rubbish, if they threw it in one of the bins, it made the sound of a bomb dropping, boom, and a big explosion. People were then running around in the park trying to find other waste materials to throw in the bins to get the effect to have some fun. So it cleaned the park up. It changed people's behaviors. In, in industry where it's useful is they look at safety. Um, I believe it was a company uh, in the workplace were getting injuries was uh, Pep Boys, one of the, the vehicle repair and maintenance places, and they were getting quite a lot of injuries. And so they, they put a gamifi they gamified some activities in order to reduce injury, to m change people's behavior where they were getting the most injuries. They got people to change their behavior to cut down on injuries. So there are a lot of ways that it can be applied to business. And these are very, very powerful um, behavior changes components and how we can get interaction for companies to the crowd and get the crowd to interact. In, in, in brick and mortar in the old days, it was much more difficult to get a two-way conversation and to create a minimum viable product and get people to come in and say, how can we change that up to something that they want, that the people want, that then becomes something that's very useful and has a lot of potential for profit. So let's just look at, um, some of the, the engagement attributes and you know we're looking about uh, the ranking you can get and, and, and some self-efficiency, efficiency, uh, uh, control and impact. We're looking at, at peer pressure, social peer pressure, especially online. We're looking at eliciting positive uh, change, behavior changes. We're looking at instant feedback. We're looking at clear authentic rules and goals and virtual Currencies and points that the, the rewards can be can be issued out on. So this is some of the engagement and the power of engagement, especially from the core component of a, of an organization, an enterprise. 
going out with an MVP, a minimum viable product, looking for the requirement, the changes that perhaps the crowd, the people want. And many of these organizations have started out with one idea and have actually changed through innovative ideas from the crowd how to actually give them something else. It's changed completely into another product. And so I'd like to just go over, we've been on the creative side of exponential in, in, in enterprises, and the other side is control. But so just to recap, we went over uh, the MTP, the Massively Transformative Purpose, and then we've discussed that brands are morphing into transformative purposes. Z Gen as millennials want something of a, of a workplace that's enjoyable, but also they're going to be working remotely. They want to be part of a cause, something that has consequence, is a much greater motivator other than pure finance. We're looking at scaling enterprises, looking to learn from the outside. Remember, a lot of this is, this is external that we've been talking about. Things that the companies and organizations can do externally to affect the internal drive and the, the, the direction they're going. So the align, agility, uh, speed, learning, etc. We're looking at externalities such as staffing. Remember, I spoke about staff on demand. I spoke about communities and the crowd. I spoke about algorithms. Leveraged assets such as shared space, co-working venues, etc., and big machinery. I spoke about those things. We talk about now engagement. So how do you get them to actually engage in what you're doing and make it part of your organization? Now, the next time we talk, we're going to start to move over to the control side of, of uh, exponential enterprises, and we'll start to discuss that in our next uh, episode. Um, as usual, I'd like you to like, follow, subscribe to us. And you remember, you can go to the Exponential Entrepreneurs uh, Academy, the, the page, Exponential Entrepreneur Academy Facebook page, and there's a link there you can get to see, if, and there's some more information there, you can get some more information on us. And uh, as usual, we will see you in the next episode.